Hey guys, how's it going? This is Ty with this week's Wander. I've been missing in action for the last few months. Haven't made any YouTube videos or anything like that. No reason in particular, just haven't really got around to it. But since then, I have sparked the interest again. I actually want to change the channel a bit, make some more authentic videos, a little more about vehicles. I'm really big into Forerunners, and I haven't seen too many fourth gen Forerunner videos out there, at least, you know, with builds and things like that. So, I wanted to start making more videos about that. Um, I also moved to Utah, so there's a ton of stuff I can do out here. Um, and I'm going to be filming on some of those adventures as well. So, for this video, I wanted to do a rig walk around of my Forerunner build. Nothing crazy, nothing special, but I just want to show you uh, my setup and how it works for me. Alright, so here's a closer look at my Forerunner. This is a 2004 SR5 4th uh, Gen. This is just my weekend adventure rig. I don't really go overlanding. Just kind of a quick, quick little weekend camping vehicle. Um, so let's dive into the setup. Let's start off with some suspension. Alright guys, not sure if you can really see under here. I'm not the best at camera work. I have the Bilstein 5100 struts. I have some 5th gen coils on there. Um, this does have a diff drop. I think it's like a one inch diff drop. I did the swap myself in my garage. Um, I don't have a spring compressor, so I just compressed the springs with the vehicle and swapped them out. But yeah, there you can see the diff drop here. It does help out with the CV angles. In the rear, I'm running the 5100 shocks as well. And I have stock springs with, I think it's a two inch uh, spacer. I eventually do want to change those out for maybe some old man emu heavy duty, because it is sagging in the rear. I was thinking about just throwing a three inch spacer on there just to help out a little bit, but I think for that work, I'll just throw in some new springs. So that's what we have going on. Let's dive into the wheel and tire setup. All right, so here's my setup. I'm running a 285-70-17. I've got the BFG KO2s. Sorry, KM2s, they're not the KO2s. I'm running the stock SR5 wheels. These are actually painted. I had them plastered it before, but they were peeling off. So I did a rattle can job on them. As you can see, it's coming off just with some trail usage. So I'm eventually planning on getting a whole new wheel and tire setup. I'm running inch and a half spacers. They're the eBay spacers that had some really good reviews. Been running them for about a year and I've had no issues. I keep them torqued to make sure everything's lubricated and whatnot. So. There's no problems there, haven't had them seize up on me or anything. I've had really good experience with the KM2s. I actually had them on my old rig. I had a 1989 FJ62, it's running 37s. I really like them. Some people don't like BFGs, but I really like them. So no complaints there. They're getting worn out. So I really need to get some new ones. I'm, I've been looking at getting some of the Nito Ridge Grapplers really like those my dad has them on his fifth gen um so i just need to do some shopping around but that's the wheel and tire setup next i'm gonna talk about the roof rack this is a home built roof rack that i built i think it cost me about 70 bucks in material for the steel so super affordable to do i'm not the best welder but i got it done with a little mig welder so it's just square tube I've stood on this thing, doesn't have any movement. I just tied them into the original stock rack location. I built some mounts for the high lift and 
shovel. These are the quick grip shovel mounts. I really like them, haven't had issues. Been running those for about a year. I really like how low profile it is. Front fairing I just built. There was a ton of wind noise before I had that fairing there. So I built one and there's hardly any wind noise anymore. So that's nice. It's a nice sleek setup. Been really happy with it so far. I've had a lot of people ask me about these graphics. It's just Plasti Dip. I just taped it off and measured a little bit. Plasti Dip those graphics on there. Obviously their first gen 4Runner inspired graphics. I was gonna do them on the front here, but there's just not enough room and I didn't think it looked too good. So I just left it on the back. So yeah, let's talk about my gear setup now. All right, so here's what the rear cargo space looks like. Honestly, guys, I didn't even clean it up for this video. I don't really care. I just want this to be a raw, authentic video. Um, so yeah, this is what I keep with me all the time. You know, m minus one or two things, this is usually what I have every day. This is kind of my bag for miscellaneous parts. I have some wood blocks for the jack, um, jumper cables, some rags and cleaner, some tie downs, things like that. So that's just kind of my tool bag, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, this is more for camping gear. Right now all that's in it is my hammock. I have my sleeping bag here. It's a really good sleeping bag. I'll probably have a video on that later about my hammock setup. A lot of people don't like to go hammock camping, but I found it to be really fun and actually um, quite an easy way to do it. So that's what I got there. I have an ARB recovery set. So it's got a tree saver, some recovery straps, different lengths. Um, I think there's a snatch block in there, which I don't have a winch right now, but that's coming in the future. I have some weights, because everyone knows you want to weight your winch cable if it's a steel cable. So these are actually some ankle weights. I just throw them in to dampen, just in case the line snapped. I have some gloves in there as well. Um, but yeah, that's what's going on there. I have a toolbox, some small hand tools and some bolts and miscellaneous things there. This is my CB antenna. I don't run it all the time because I park in a parking garage so it always hits. I just decided to take it off. I only run it when I need it. I have my first aid and my fire extinguisher, blanket. I need to put everything where it's supposed to go. Um, some bolt cutters. That's about it. Um, I used to have a cargo shelf in here and I had a hitch mounted tire carrier but since then I got rid of the tire carrier I have to run my full size spare inside and it just didn't work with my shelf that I had so I have plans on making a new one I'm hoping to get a rear bumper built so I can run that thing on the back here but so that's what I have going on. I'll make future videos about what I take with me on my outings and just kind of what gear I use specifically. Cause I am on a budget. I'm going to college full time, you know, putting myself through it. So don't have a lot of time or money for rigs right now, but that's all right. I make do with what I have. So let's go on to what's inside. All right, so like I said, I didn't clean this thing up at all, really. Um, needs a good vacuum and a wipe down for sure. I bought some of these cheap seat covers. I think they're American sniper covers or something like that. I don't really like the front design. I'm not really into the skull and crossbones. I tried to kind of get rid of it by wiping it off and stuff, but you can still see it. Um, but anyways, I really like the back panels because you can stick stuff in there. I have my walkie talkies, some lights, things like that. I don't really put too much back there because there's not a ton of leg room. Same deal over here. I have another first aid kit. I don't know why I have so many, but you know, it's, it's not a bad thing, I guess. 
These are actually really cool. I like these. I actually know who makes these. So these are called a wrap -a pack They're super compact. If I can open it with one hand. Um, so you got your alcohol pads, you got your burn gel, band-aids. Um, flip it over. Got some tape, scissors, some tweezers, some big gauze pads, cotton balls. You got a set of gloves. I think there's two set of gloves. Uh, so it's nothing major, but it's good to have. I think there's a poncho in here too. But yeah. So if you guys are interested, that's who makes them. They're out of Crane, Oregon. I know the family there. Anyways, just wanted to show you guys that. I'm not sponsored or anything by them. I just wanted to show you. They're a small business, and I just think it's cool that they're doing that. So anyways, got my this week's wonder sticker. Oh yeah. They were cheap. That's why they're so small. Got my school bag here. Get that out of the way. Um... I'm running this phone mount, which I really like. It's more heavy duty than most of them, and it's out of the way. I don't like having my phone up here. I don't even remember the brand. I think I got it at like Target or something. But yeah, it's adjustable. I used to put my iPad in this thing. I put my phone in it. It's pretty rigid. It does wobble a little bit because of the bushing that it's on. But it's just a suction cup. I didn't want to drill in. So that's what we got there. I'm running a Cobra CB. I've made my own little mount. If there's enough interest, I'll pull it off and I'll um, do a walkthrough on how I mounted that. I didn't want to drill into the plastic or anything. So I removed the carpet and did it right, I guess you could say. Running a dash cam, because you never know about the people here in Utah. They're not the best drivers. Got my patch collection. Nothing special. I think that's about it for the interior. So let's hop over to the engine bay. Alright, so this is probably the cleanest part of my rig right now. Which is very surprising. But the main thing I wanted to talk to you guys about in here was I did the the fog light mod it's just that wire so if there's enough interest with that I can do a walkthrough on how I did that as well it just lets you run the fog separately from the headlights so you can turn them on um, and just run those if you want it also works with the high beams and everything so not sure why it didn't come like that from factory but there's a nice little mod for that the other thing is my PA system um, kind of fun to have. I don't even, this horn is not, uh, the PA horn is not very good. I think it partially, it's because I have it mounted like that, but it's not too loud. My headlights are oxidized like crazy. I'm going to probably do the 06 swap, um, because I want some projectors, but that's somewhere down the line. I'll do the grill as well um, when I do that. I actually have a cool idea for like a TRD Pro style grill. Um, but yeah, I'm getting a, a bumper built for this. He, like I think he's working on it right now. So it's gonna be like a hybrid tube plate bumper. So it'll have plate in the middle, I'll have a winch plate and everything. And then I'll have some tube wings coming out. So I'm going to need to do the washer relocation for the washer fluid. There's enough room up here that I think I can stick it here. If not, I'll have to get a different bottle and mock that up. I also, I don't even remember what they call the mod. Well, it's not really even a mod, but um, I just took out the secondary uh, screen in here. I saw maybe a one mile per gallon gain with my MPGs, I don't know. I don't even know if it did anything. The throttle response is about the same, honestly, so. But I just did it. Um, other things that I can think of, 
I did the axle dump for my exhaust. Chopped that off so it's out of the way with rocks. I'm eventually gonna do a rear bumper like I said before. I think what I'm gonna do, I'll probably either chop right here or I'll come up higher on these bumper wings and then I wanna keep this so I'll cut all the way down and then I'll do some bumper work. I wanna come up and protect the light a little bit because as you can see, um, that's a weak spot for tight trails. So I'll do some quarter panel protection probably on Wampa, my old cruiser. I did some really neat light protection back there so I might do something similar. But I don't know. I don't have a ton of time to do my own fab work so I might be paying something to do someone to do that. I'm running a shackle back here. It does its job, nothing special. I think it's Harbor Freight actually. It's not rated for a ton. Well, not specifically a ton. I don't know what it's actually rated for. But I like it because it sticks out a little bit. So if someone rear ends me, it'll wreck them. Um, I've pulled numerous people out with it. It also, it's good and bad that it sticks out because my departure angle is not very well with it. But it's better that than my bumper. So it kind of serves multi-purpose. But yeah, that's what we're looking at here.